You know the Billy Ray was a preacher, son. Yeah. When the daddy go home, yeah. you don't know. I was um, the son of a preacher, man. Yes, he was. He was. Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna sing the song about my Spanish teacher who was super hot. That's what the song's gonna be about. I, <laughs> was my high school teacher, man. You know what's hilarious? It's like every Spanish teacher I ever had was white. Yo, this woman had sex with my buddy multiple times. Hilarious. And so he couldn't drive. So I had to drive him over to her house and she would make me enchiladas and I would sit in the living room and eat enchiladas. When they and, and then she would eat, he would eat her they, enchiladas. They had sex. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was pretty amazing. All right. We, we good? All right. Oh, are we rolling? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry about that, everybody. Well, we're not going to work on that out. Limit. She's probably 80 now. So nobody's going to throw her in jail. You know what I mean? <laughs> And not only that, here's how different the time was. I think everybody pretty much knew. Including the school stuff? I don't know if the school You're just talking about knew. like kids? Uh, everybody I knew, knew I mean, look, if uh, I'm not saying- By the I'm way, like, hey, man. Hey, man. Hey, how are you? Yeah. Did, uh, we were just talking. Did, did the part about having sex with a Spanish teacher, was that on there? Oh, yeah. We'll yeah, cut okay. that out. We don't have to. Okay. Uh, well, hey, yeah. man. I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. What's up? Um, But yeah, no, look, I'm not saying I would, because I think it would be to have, be an underage kid having sex with your teachers. I don't know. I think it's kind of weird. But if I was that kid- I'd be telling everybody. Can I tell you something? Especially if it was like a hot teacher in school. I'd be telling everybody. It was a different time because here's what he knew. If parents found out, he was going to have to stop fucking this teacher. Yeah. So it like it, there wasn't. And I bet you if you asked him right now, I know there are people out there and guys, I know grown people should not be having sex with high school students. And I get it. He was a 16 year old kid. And I, if you asked him, which I have, did it scar you? He would tell you exactly what he told me might've been the best experience of his life. And he's got three kids. Yeah. So, there you, go. you know, it's different strokes. Some people are Giggity. definitely, definitely taken advantage of without a doubt. hundred percent. I'm not diminishing that. And some people, do you know what I find interesting, dude? And Hey man, um, we'll get to all the business stuff. Yeah, in a second. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to find interesting. Hmm. And I don't know what this says about me, but I have been fondled multiple times as an adult, you know, by that Pilates instructor. Oh, oh, oh. By, okay, yeah, by yeah. a doctor, by a doctor, um, by that photographer, right? I told you that. I told oh, that yeah, story yeah, 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 Bros. Um, and I don't know what this says about me. That I just was like, nah, I don't really care. I think it just really affects people. It, it affects people differently. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you're, here's the thing, though. I mean, I, the doctor who gave me a prostate when I didn't need one, I, I, I laughed about that. Yeah, here's my thing, man. It's like, you're... But, but I don't know if that's trauma, why I'm not, why I'm just blowing all that up. I have no idea. No, I also just, here's the thing. I think you're wired differently. Like, I think all comics are wired differently. Yeah. And, and... You know, I, I think a lot of... Uh, By the way, not diminishing anybody's no, no, experience. No, 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 this not is at all. my experience. Like I said, it affects everybody differently. Yeah. I just think for you, like, you find funny in dark things. Yeah. All of us do. Yeah. But, you know, it's just like, you know, that's what it is. And so you chose to, you were like, well, it happened. Uh, I didn't really realize it until now. It doesn't really affect me in any way. And I'm just going to laugh about it. Because also for you, laughing about shit, laughing at yourself and laughing about your life experiences helps you go through life. Yeah. And if you're a Pilates instructor and you're stretching my hamstring and you you need to put your whole hand on my nutsack, I, I mean, whatever, just give me a good stretch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know? I would I would disagree with that part. <laughs> I just want, if you're if you're an instructor, I just want the stretch. Of, yeah, sure. I want the, that's what I'm saying though. I don't I don't need the nut cup. I don't need it, but like I'm not gonna call the police or no 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 no. no. You know, I just just give me a good stretch. And, but again, if you were cupping my nuts and not giving me a good stretch, that's what I'd be mad about. <laughs> that's when the police get called. Now that's right. <laughs> now the dude who where I had a bad back and he gave me a prostate exam. You probably should have called the cops. Yeah, look, no, I'm not. I'm not digging the prostate exam. And at the time, I was so young and naive. I just assumed doctors knew. That, that's the thing, though. Is like, and and like you, you, as no matter what age you are, especially as a young, what were you, twenty, twenty something? Mid-20s? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my thing. It's, for me, also, like I know that there is no prostate in a physical, but it, well, there is. 
but not when not you have for, a bad back. Not for, but also not for a 25 year old. Probably not. You're, you don't. I'm yeah, you're, correct you're, me if I'm you're, wrong. You're, I'm pretty sure you don't get a prostate exam until you turn 40. Right. Probably right. You're probably right. So like that. That I just know, and I would be like, hell no. Like you, I'm, I'm fucking walking out. I like I would. I would just walk out and then call the cops in, but also it's a different time. You you know. You know what's like, crazy is that what I do like about your generation, and and not just your generation, but what th what the times have done, is there is a little more now. Me th personally, if I was a doctor now, I'd go crazy because everybody Google's and thinks that they're smarter than the doctor. <laughs> but there is something to the amount of information out there where you don't have to blindly trust people. And so yeah. when I was growing up, you, you blindly, you weren't, when the doctor said something to you, you didn't go, go let me go home and, and Google that. Let me go to the library and get some microfish. Do you know? But by the way, shout out microfish. Do you guys, anybody who knows what microfish is? I know what it is, but just because of like old TV. Old it's, TV? Dis, or not old TV, but like TV set in olden days. Correct. Yeah. Olden days, everybody, meaning the 90s. The 80s. <laughs> The fucking nineties. Um, um, but, but yeah, uh, but also with with my generation, it's a good. This is like I think it's a good thing and a bad thing that comes with my generation is like we are more confident with questioning authority, which yes, is a are. good thing, but also a bad thing. Yes, because again, you think you know more than someone when you don't, and yes. you question them, thinking you're the smartest person in the room. But in that scenario, if I was getting a prostate check at mid twenties during a physical for a bad back, I would question his authority and be like, "Hey, man, why are you trying to stick your finger in my ass?" Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And and I think that's uh, it's a it's a good and a bad thing for this generation. We are just more confident with questioning but, people above us. But dude, I will tell you something like if I was a doctor right now, especially how everything with COVID has yeah, yeah, yeah. borne out. If I was a doctor right now, I have friends who are doctors. And they're like Google I would if I if Google was around and I knew about it and I had talked to people what their experience was, I wouldn't be a doctor right now. 100%. Because everybody thinks that they're 10 minute search on Google is it jumps over my 12 years in school and three years in residency and, and all, all that and shit. $200,000 in debt. Yes, yeah. <laughs> for sure. But also, you know, what's funny now, like with the internet, with AI and shit, I don't know if you've been seeing this, Matt, you might've seen it. When you Google shit now, it comes up with like an AI preview answer for like, like AI will just generate an answer based on your question. So I, uh, my girlfriend and I, Iman, were in a conversation last night and uh, we were talking about I was at an open mic. There was a conversation that went on and somebody said American heroes. And I was like, what, what would, what are we classifying as an American hero? And so she Googled like top 10 American heroes. And the first thing that came up, guess what it was? Oh, okay. I'm going to tell you right now, real quick. This is your hint. It's not a real person. It is a fictional character. Rocky. Nope. Good guess though. That's actually a great guess. <laughs> that is a great guess. Top 10. Just the number one. What, the number one, what's the question again? Uh, American hero. And it's not Rocky? It's not Rocky. Okay. Number one, American hero, fictional. Fictional. Ooh, boy. Uh, uh, I'm not going to lie. Think about the words American and hero, and it's going to be real easy. It is? Think about the two words. American hero. Fictional character. The Rock. That, he is a real person. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sometimes I don't think he is with those biceps. How good do my arms look? Like? I, I told you before, you're looking big. Yeah. Let's yeah. not stray away though. Hold on. Look, we're, guess, guess this, guess this, guess this. Um, give me a clue besides American Hero. Fictional character, American Hero. That's all I can give you. Uh, that's it? Dude. Matt, okay. Matt, you Rambo. Guess? Rambo. You guessed. No. No. What? It's Rocky not, and Rambo. It's not Sylvester Stallone in any movie. Okay. But he's, but why, why is, but by the way, why was Rocky a good guess and Rambo so ridiculous? Rambo saved the world a couple times. Did he? I think so. I don't think so. Maybe uh, saved a part of the pay a part of the world. We'll fact check that. Okay, but Anyways. I mean, all right. He killed like a, a hundreds of people in one. Okay, so it's not a. Is it a movie? Yes, guy? it is. Yes. Okay, and it's not Rocky. No, I like Luke, how Rocky Sky Luke Skywalker. <laughs> is he technically American? No, no. he's not, Matt. No, he's not from America. He's a Jedi. Isn't that isn't that based on America? It's from Tatooine. Oh, Tattoo Inc. Tatooine. 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 That sounds like a Vietnamese dish. It sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want me to tell you? Or you want to keep guessing? I know. I would love a plate of Tatooine right now. Keep guessing. They, they I think they make that, that in by Canada. The way, by the way, 
That movie's not even based in this time. I know. Or but, on this planet. Okay, but maybe Far Away Earth. <sighs> Keep guessing. Okay. Um, have I seen this? Yes. Mm. Okay. Um, and this person is in other movies that aren't specifically about him. Captain America. Bingo. See, American and hero. He's Captain America and mm -hmm. he's a superhero. Yeah. So a AI starts to generate random shit because people like, obviously, when you put misinformation on the internet, right? AI generates an answer to your question based off the shit that would pop up. Yeah. And so Captain America came up as number one and right under him, Martin Luther King. And I was like, see, one of them I'm with. I don't know about the other one. I would say for sure Martin Luther King should be above Captain America. He Captain America's not even real. I but here's what I would say about Captain America. You ready? He's not real? No, but guys like him and Rocky inspire people. So why aren't they heroes? What's the definition of a hero? I don't know. That's the thing. It's like I, I don't Can know. Can you Google definition of a hero? I got you. Okay. So the definition of a hero, because does a hero have to be real, a real person, or does a hero just represent something? Uh, a person who is admired or idolized for courage, outstanding achievements, or noble qualities. How is that not Captain America? I mean, sure, but I, if I'm going to say American hero, though, I'm picking someone probably who's real. Yeah. And by the way, the top, the other three on that list. Let me guess. Benjamin the, Franklin. No. Abe Lincoln. No. Any well, politicians? I mean, yeah, but I don't know if I would put them up there. Jorge Washington. Actually, he was up there. I think he was at the bottom of the list. Though. Yeah, Jorge. Uh, George Washington, for anybody who didn't get that joke. I get it. It's not a joke. Well, his name's not Jorge. Jorge. Anywho, keep going. Um, okay, so were these real people? Yeah, I think the rest of the list was real people. Okay. Correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think Oprah. Uh, Oprah was on there, actually. For sure. 100% Oprah. she was on there. Yep. Uh, but she, that's not the three that I'm... So So under Captain America was MLK, and then the two under him. Who? You're not guessing? Nah, anymore? I'm done with you. Uh, Malcolm X, Rosa Parks. Oh, okay. Which I'm with. I like all that. Yes, but... Because they're all three amazing. So I'm going to yes, but this. That's targeting one... Um... Like the civil rights movement, it's targeting one thing in our country. Right, but then there was more stuff under it where it was okay. like George Washington and... It seems like AI to generate that. That's saying, oh, that wasn't an AI... Oh, oh, that was on the AI generated list. Yeah, yeah. That's really... Um, it's, but it's bizarre to me that those three would be two, three, and four. Um, they're all super important, but they're all the same cause. Yeah, but that was also... But a huge are, turning point in this country. Sure, dude. We, but we've had a bunch of huge turning points. And I would tell you, they are probably only heroes. Mar Martin Luther King, probably to more. But Malcolm X and Rosa Parks are probably only heroes to a smaller group of people. Yeah, okay. Fair enough. And, and, by Oof. the way, not diminishing that that did hurt. Yeah, not, I, again, it sounded like it Saying hurt. it again, not diminishing what they did and their bravery and all that stuff. 100%. But I would think that top five should be a little more diverse, not in skin color, yeah. but in what they did to yeah. become. I mean, George Washington was on there. John Adams was on there. Um, yeah, I don't fucking know why John Adams was on there. Yeah. Um, and a couple more, but uh, yeah, I, I I checked out after she said Captain America because I just couldn't stop laughing. That's I, I'm on board for, but by the way, is Captain America? I, I'm so curious, everybody listening, please, in the comments. If you were going to put one American hero who isn't real, it's for sure Captain America. I, is more than Rocky? Okay, then Captain just, America saved the fucking world. But Rocky is an underdog, an American blue collar story. It doesn't matter how hard you get hit. It matters how many times you can get up. Well, but think about this. In the beginning of the Captain America movie, he wasn't Captain America. He was just, he, he looked Wait, like he, me. He took steroids. Okay. Steroids. Whatever. But he looked like me. Yeah. And in that scene where the, somebody throws a fake grenade in, in the group of the soldiers and he jumps on it, that's a dude who's willing to sacrifice himself for the greater good of his brothers, which yeah. I would also like, and they were like, all right, that's the dude we want because he has the passion to defend his country and defend his people. Ladies and gentlemen, please uh, reach out to us. Is Rocky more of an American hero or Captain America? I feel like I'm going to win this one. Um, anyways, hey man. Hey. I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. Uh, first of all, let me say a couple of things. 
it, it, something happened today, which just shows me how much time we spend together. Yo, first of all, it's been a nice break from seeing your face. Needed a break. A hundred percent. We didn't see each other at all last week other than the show. Needed a, and, and the pod. And I know some people are going to be like, dude, you go fuck. No, guys, we, this is no. the kind of good relationship we have with each other. We love each other, but also, you actually sent me a text. Well, on a text, it was like, I don't need to see you. Yeah. I said something about D1, and you're like, nah, I don't, I don't need to see you. Yeah, I also, because I had my own shit to do. I was going to do my own shit, and I was like, hey, man, love you, but I'll fucking see you probably tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Like, I was like, no, nah, I'm I'm good. He, you were like, do you want to drive me somewhere? And I was yeah. like, fucking take an Uber, bro. Get, get the fuck out of my car. <laughs> but I love that, I do love that we have that relationship where neither one of our feelings are being hurt. By saying that out loud, zero. I love that we know we know or we know each other so well, guys. We were on the phone today. I was in my car. He was in his car. We were on the way here. We were on the way, on the way to this podcast. In the middle of a conversation, I just screamed, "Ah, oh, what the fuck? I gotta go." No, but I no. Screamed. You screamed, and I was like, uh, we were talking, and then all I hear is, "God fucking damn it!" And you hang up. There was nothing. I gotta go. It was God fucking damn it, and beep beep beep, and oh. I was like, and I heard. I it. said I gotta go, but I must have hung up first. <laughs> And he was on the way here. So I knew he was in his car. So, and I heard a little clank of something metal in your car. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well, I'm going to think worst case scenario first. And I texted you. I said, you okay? And you said, yeah. And I said, okay, because it sounded like a car accident. Or you spilled your whole tin thing of water on you in the car. <laughs> yeah. It's got to be one of the two. And you just said, and you liked the the water one. You went, that one. And yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> By I was way, like, I know you so well. I it's because I could, I know what irritates you. <sighs> and for some reason, spilling water on you makes you so fucking angry. I can't even, I don't even understand why. Can like, I it tell makes you? you so mad. Can I tell you why? Yeah, I would love to know okay. why. Because when you spill liquid, you're like, oh, I just, you look at the glass and you're like, oh, I just spilled this much of the glass. But it's everywhere. It's everywhere. everywhere. You're like, there's no way that's that much water. I spilled. An eighth of a glass of water, I have the mop out. Do you know what I mean? I got to roll up my cuffs. An eighth, Dude, water and semen, they get everywhere and you don't even know, like, how did that end up on the wall? Well, whatever. Uh, oh, sexy, you have <laughs> What the fuck? Holy shit. That, I'm not going to ask any further questions into that. I'm just saying, dude, that water. But can I tell you what I love about Vegas? So I didn't have any... There's water. And you know how I am about spilt water. I'm, As we just discussed. Yes, but yes, I, yes. guys, one of the reasons I'm this way about spilt water is one of my triggers, both Beth and I have extreme mold allergies. Right. And we have had to get rid of houses. We've had to get rid of thing, all of our possessions before. Yeah, 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 yeah. So any spilt water is a fucking quick trigger for me because I know that for those of you who don't know, I think it's something like, I forget what the guy said, our mold guy, but something like 24 hours. It's just got to be wet for 24 hours. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And mold is growing. Yeah, right? 100%. And I'm like, I don't want to throw away this fucking car. But we, guys, when I mean we've thrown things away, everything... Dude, they moved out of a house, left all their clothes. They lived out of a suitcase for... Wait, wait, wait. Beth and I walked out of a house naked. Right. A house that we bought that we... I had all of my worldly... Pres belongings for the first 50 years of my life. Yeah. And every personal item, every picture, every book, every article of clothing, that shoe collection, the Doc you got Martens. You way better shoe collection now. I do now. <laughs> that Doc Martens I had from the 90s yeah, that I, that I used to go, oh my God. I think that's that's the biggest one for you, isn't it? Those It's sentimental. The sentimental stuff. You, you, you went through everything in that. But guys, we walked out of that house naked, man. And so water freaks me out. I can't have it. I can't. If there's a spill at my house, if any, like I can't have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moisture in my bathroom, like I'm, I, I'm, I'm. I didn't think about that. I'm, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why. That's why. It makes when you, you so ever angry. see me react like that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, it's just such a quick trigger. Yeah, I never. I actually didn't think about it like yeah. that. Yeah. So, but even before that, it made you angry. It, it yeah, but not now, like this. Yeah, but now it's a trigger. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got you. And so I'm in the car, and I go, I gotta. I'm like, I gotta fucking clean this. And so my, I'm like, I didn't have any, I usually keep some, honestly, some towels in the center console thing for that reason. Oh, just I, in case I, I, yeah, my center console is loaded with napkins. Okay. God knows why. I looked in nothing. 
So I'm like, oh, I'm going to have to take off my shirt, but then I'm going to have to do the podcast shirtless. I would have joined you. So I took off my socks and I dried up the water. Now I will tell you what I love about Vegas. It's so hot. I just put my socks on the passenger seat in the sun and they dried up. Well, yeah. this, this one dried up. So I put this one on. Yep. But this one, I found one of Beth's socks in the, so I'm wearing like a, you're, you're like the kind of guy who just grabs whatever he sees and then walks out the door. Like that's, yeah. that's what that looks like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we know each other well, man. And yeah, and, that's, uh, that's pretty, that's pretty funny. Before we get into what you want to talk about, get some business out. First of all, we're in Oklahoma City this week. Uh, we're in Portland the week after. Yep. We are in San Diego over Father's Day weekend. Yo. And we are in Hawaii the week after that. Yo. Okay. Guys, I, I can't thank you enough for coming out to the shows. Um, uh, the energy you guys bring. I want to let you know, dude. I think you know. Maybe it's been maybe a week, 10 days. I've just mentally not been. I know. On cue. You, even even when we were in Austin, I could see it. Yeah, I was and, not. And I know why. Yeah, I was not mentally on cue. And I um, I feel like I, I had a bad, no, I don't feel like I did. Yesterday was a huge kind of bounce back day for me. Good. You know, I want everyone to know, man, you know, everybody, everybody has days or goes through periods or mm -hmm. even when your mental is, you're like, my mental is strong. You're going to have things in your life that push you down. Yeah. And so you, and, and, life. um, you just got to stand back up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I, it was a good 10 days for me where I was really questioning a lot of mm -hmm. stuff. And so yeah. I'm, I'm happy to be out of that. Um, and ready to get back into the driver's seat and, and, and drive a hundred miles an hour. Great. Yeah. I was kind of in my head this last, I don't know, four ish, days, five mm -hmm. days. Uh, I did my first two features uh, on Friday and Saturday. I was at 702 Karaoke Friday night, which is hosted by Johnny Brim. So if you're in Vegas, uh, it's a great little open mic spot. Um, and there's you know a lot of good open mic comics. So 702 Karaoke, Johnny Brim on Fridays. And then Noreen's is hosted by another buddy of ours named... Don't you want to promote our show in Vegas instead? Yeah, I'm going to... I'm, okay. I'm getting there. Okay. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, I promoted your show all this week yeah, and weekend. Yeah, like yeah, uh, yeah. I told every every open mic comic and everybody who was in the crowd to come to these shows on Mondays. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you. Okay, we reach a bigger audience than the open mic that you were at. But go ahead. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Still got to give shout outs to my guys for for, know. for putting me on. I'm you kidding, know, I'm kidding. Uh, and Noreen's uh, Josh Lidauer, um the two biggest bags of dicks I've ever eaten. Friday night at 702. I, I was, it wasn't the worst. I did all right. I, I kind of brought myself back on some jokes that didn't hit by playing with some, uh, you know, teasing some people in the audience and they kind of kept me alive. Um, but then Saturday was like, was bad. I got through one of my, I got through like, you know, the first half of my shit and, uh, and it just was nothing. Like it was all like even the open mic comics weren't paying attention. Barflies were no no one was paying attention to it, and I was like, well. And there's a guy who sits off to the left. It was Matt. Uh, he's one of the producers, and he has a mic, and he can ask you questions. Mm -hmm. uh, and to like you know, if you just want to shoot the shit, and I was like, well, well, I guess I'll have Matt ask me a question. I go, uh, Josh, how much time I got? He goes, you're only halfway through. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> and we all kind of laughed. And I was like, all right, Matt, hit me. And he just started asking me some questions and. Uh, Nothing really funny came out of it. I was just kind of like me and truthful on stage and hoping I would think of something. And I was like, Matt, how about a question that might elicit a funny response? He goes, that's your job, bro. And I was like, God. He's not lying. Yeah. I was like, God <laughs> damn. He's I was like, you're right. So I, and then at yeah. one point, I knew no one was looking at me. So I just turned to the side and was just talking to Matt for the last four minutes. Funny. Um, and after those sets, I was, I was in my head. I was like, maybe I'm not built for this. I was like, maybe I am only funny because I'm Josh Wolf's kid and like I'm only doing well at his shows because people know who I am and I'm only talking about you and I got off stage and talked to some of the comics Jake Yarbrough uh, Mark Johnson and they were like dude that was one of the better ones I've ever seen you were like they were like the features here there are people who are do well yeah they eat shit here and he was like and that's okay he was like but these mics aren't what you should be doing on stage like or what you do on the road this is the this is a chance for you yes. to branch out. They were like, you don't, you don't want to be Josh Wolf's son forever. Right. And I was like, no, that's the whole reason I'm doing this. And he goes, great. 
stop talking about your fucking dad. And I was like, great fucking point. And so I was in my head a little bit still. And then when Monday came around for our show, Jimmy Kimmel's 7.30 every Monday night. Thank you. Jesus. I He'll be there. Kimmel? No, Jesus. Oh. <laughs> I was like, what? I don't know if people will come. Actually, that's not the crowd we wanted. Our no. And so. <laughs> not, I, not that I don't like Jesus, everybody. <laughs> but if you're, if you're, yeah, whatever. Anywho. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to just quit while you're ahead. I'm gonna just Yeah, but people get mad at the silliest little things yeah, yeah, now, yeah, yeah, so yeah. I like to mock that. Yeah. Oh, I, I could mock it with more, but I'm yeah. not going to. But like, I, when I came to that show Monday, I was like, <sighs> I was like, I, I need to get my head back. I go, I know my shit's funny. Mm -hmm. I know this stuff is funny. Half of this crowd, 75% of this crowd does not know who the fuck I am. But I know these stories and these jokes are funny. And so I had a killer set Monday night. I know you did. And I honestly, I try not to cuss as much because you told me not to and it's not needed. But when I got up there, I was like, eh, fuck that. Yeah. And I, it was the most I've ever cussed in a set ever. And it was, I... One of the best, I think one of the best sets I've had at Kimmel's yeah. ever. Not because of the cussing, but yeah. I do feel like, I just feel more authentically me. Okay. Just saying whatever just comes to my mind yeah. on stage. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. And it, it just, it helps me kind of keep that energy and that groove. And so. My only point about swearing is when you're a young comic, you don't want to use it as a crutch. You want to make sure the jokes are funny without the swear. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And I just kind of used it as, uh, yeah. you know, as, as just fun little playful. And, uh, and then I did. I, I was, and I was like, okay, cool. Like, I know, I, I know I'm funny and I know I'm not just funny because I'm Josh Wilson. Like I, I'm, I'm good at this and I know I am and I'm only going to get better. And I was still in my head about those open mics and, uh, Haley, who was with us on Monday as well. She runs a open mic at the town square wise guys on Tuesdays or like it, there's one there, but she was the host. And yesterday I was still in my head and I was like, ah, fuck it. I'm going to this. I'm going to this open mic. And I did. And I got there and it was only three minutes set. So I had to think of something real quick that I could talk Three about. Three minutes set? Three minutes set. And okay. there were, quote, 70 open mic comics there. 70, okay. 70. It was a long list. And I, I was trying to think, I was going to... When did they put you up? What number? Uh, 17th. Good number, dude. Well, well, because usually like what it was is you walk in, you write your name on a ticket, and they pull it out of a bucket, and they yeah. just write the list like that. Originally, she hadn't pulled my name out of the bucket yet, and she was at 30. And I was like... Hmm. Don't know if I want to go that late because all these everyone's gonna leave when they're done yeah. with their set and go to a different show, which is exactly what happened. And she goes, Well, I crossed this person, I moved this person up. I go, Great, I'll take I'll take 17. And I was talking to Evan Connolly, another one of the comics we know, and I was talking about him, talking to him about what I wanted to talk about. And I was it was gonna be a story that I was talking with Iman about earlier in the day in the car, and I was like, It's a funny story. I just doesn't have the right punches. And he goes, Well, what about that Cleveland story? And I was like, no, that, that's the story my dad tells. Like, I can't, that's just me taking my dad's joke. And I was like, oh no, not that Cleveland story. The other Cleveland story. And I yeah. was like, oh, I, cause I've, we've done that on stage before. Yeah. I know where the punches are. I know where to hit. And I just, I was like, that's a great idea. And so I went up and I did that story. And, and it, it was, it was, you know, it was, you know, a small crowd, but it's also, I felt so much more comfortable in a club. I yeah. feel comfortable in that comedy club. Those small little bar shows, when I get on stage, I don't feel comfortable. I feel anxious. Yeah. Because it's just not really what I'm used to. Yeah. Which is why I'm going to continue to do them because I want to never be uncomfortable when I get on stage. I love No that. matter where I am. Mm -hmm. But I got- That was three minutes. <sighs> so fast, right? To two and a half minutes longer, usually than I last. Fuck. Yeah. There's your joke. Yep. God damn it. Nailed it. Take two. Clip it. That yeah. was perfect. Two and a half minutes yeah. longer than I usually last was yeah. what I was supposed to say. Yeah, yeah. I was so excited to get the joke out. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even get it out. And so it was it was quick. I was going through it and I, I got to one part and I was like, damn, I'm almost at the end. Like I might have a minute left. And it was like 30 seconds. And I was like, oh, sick. Like that's, this was great. And I thought of some things on stage that I thought were pretty funny, just like in the moment. And, uh, but yeah, it was, uh, it, it was great. And that, honestly, even though I didn't like murder for telling, being the first time I told that on stage by myself, uh, from the past two open mics that I did, I, it, it definitely was a boost. And I felt, I felt way better walking out of it because it just like, I was like, this is, this is what I need to be doing. I need to start branching out and stop doing stories. I mean, you're in that story and I referenced but you a little bit. Here's the deal, dude. The story you tell about us meeting Miley Cyrus is not a story. 
here's the deal. It is a good story to tell, especially beginner wise, even though it's an advanced, it's still advanced for somebody at your level, dude, but it's a good story to tell because you're familiar with it. Right. Right. Cause and, it, it happens and, like I, and it has a very natural beginning, middle and end. Right. And so, and it's an entertaining story naturally. Yeah. So it's a good, I understand not wanting to be Josh Wolf's son. I'm with you a thousand percent. I wouldn't think of that as that. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. I understand that. I, I, it, think of it as you're starting comedy, dude. And so you're learning how to do it. And you are now, it's just putting, it's just having a canvas that's easier to paint on mm -hmm. while you're worrying about the other shit that right. happens as a new comic. Right, right, right. That's all. But I mean, also, like, I know it's not about, like, it's not like a Josh Wolf Sun story. Yeah. But it, in my mind, it kind of is. I hear you. Because for these reasons, uh, you know, I have the nepotism line. I have the, like, at the beginning of it, you know, I, I reference you about, like, the Chelsea show you were on. And, like, there's still, uh, there's still not a heavy amount, but there's a good amount of that story that does reference you. But again, it's not fully about you. That's why it still works in front of crowds who don't know who we are. But people tell stories about their parents all the time. A hundred percent. Right. hundred percent. But again, like for me, for, and so that, that the, the story that I did on stage, I did reference you a little bit because I was like, oh, this was the only reason I was in Cleveland is because, you know, I was with my dad and, uh, and so that, but that was the only time mm -hmm. I mentioned you because I was, I just wanted to give a little preface as to why I'm saying I like traveling to Cleveland, yep. which I do. I do love traveling to Cleveland. Yeah. Very, very eventful city. It is indeed. Just... Um, but so, yeah, it was, uh, it, it was good. It was a good little confidence boost last night. Um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I met a bunch of other comics there last night. Um, people I've seen before, people I haven't seen before. Um, but, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was good. It was good for me. That's awesome, dude. I just got a date to throw out the first pitch at the Aviators game. No shit. Yeah. When? July 2nd. Oh, we're in town that week. Oh, yeah. Oh, sick. Yeah, we're in town. I'm actually going to... We're coming. I'm actually going to see if I can't... You know who else is going to be here? Victoria Rose. Brad's... Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Wait, just her? Just her. She's coming to hang out with you guys? So psyched. Huh. She's the coolest little girl. Dude. The coolest. Her at the wake. wake? Funny. Are you kidding me? Funny. To what she said, my 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 little niece, oh, dude, is a straight up rock star. Everybody, Be, get ready, savage. She will take over. Yeah, no, I, I, she's she's super funny. Now, I, I will say something by the way, because it's so funny that you wanted to talk today about In and Out and oh oh oh, because I have been reading online. About fat, because you know I don't eat fast food. I think the last fast food I ate was probably an In-N-Out in -Out burger. burger. But outside of In-N-Out, the last fast food I had, Jacob Wolf, twenty five years ago, probably, probably a Whopper when we were kids. No, the last fast thought food I had. Get, thought about getting one today, by the way. Outside of In-N-Out, the last fast food I had was at your fourth birthday party. I had some McDonald's fries. Oh, so okay, I haven't had McDonald's in almost a year, but. I have been looking, I saw a graphic about how expensive fast food is becoming. Brother, ridiculous. I, but I'm gonna do you know why? No. It's because I don't I think it's because because in, like this is what I because uh we like a place called Rubio's, which is like a taco spot here. Yeah. And Matt, can there's a there's a graphic that you uh, I, I know why. I sent to me. Can you put the graphic up so we can re reference the uh, uh I can tell you why. No, it's not why, it's the prices. I can tell you why the prices have gone up. Yeah, I'm uh, waiting. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah well, um, that's what I'm getting. No, I, I know. I just uh, wanted to show the example. Yeah. And so uh, when we were at Rubio's, there's a uh, there's a woman who's there. She's cashier. Uh, uh, she's super nice. We're uh, like really like going there. She's a super good person. Whatever. And she, I was like, hey, I went in there. I think this past week, and I was like, oh, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. She goes, yeah, they uh, they cut our hours. Everybody's hours. So I was like, why? She goes, well, since California. California raised their minimum wage to $20 an hour and for chain restaurants. So right. Rubio's is a chain. Okay. So when, when Rubio's in LA or in California, they now have to pay their employees 20 an hour. They have to raise now the prices of the stuff on the menu to keep making money. It's straight up inflation, dude. dude it's 122% increase in the quarter pounder with cheese in a, meal. In, in a decade. That means you have to pay. Your, yeah, at bro. 10 years later, 
you are paying twice as much for your colon cancer. Dude, by the way, I ugh, that the one that makes me the most mad on this one yeah. is the McChicken. McChickens were on the dollar menu for the longest time. How dare you take that shit from us? That is bullshit. Can I tell you something else? Two McChickens for two bucks? Bro, that McChicken easy. might be the single worst fast food <clears throat> restaurant sandwich Look at that piece of shit. Dog, that McChicken's better than a Whopper. Get the fuck out of here. Eat dicks. Whoppers are trash. Anything, Eat, at, anything at Burger King is trash. Eat dicks. Look at this. Anything at Wendy's, trash. Who the fuck wants a square burger? Yeah, I'm out on this. Get the fuck out of here. You know I'm out on this. Wendy's, square. garbage. Arby's, garbage. Burger King, Arby's garbage. isn't really meat. I saw, fast food, I, saw, like fast I saw a video food. where they add water to, to whatever it is that makes their meat. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you seen that? Yeah, yeah. Dude, look, look, look at this. Uh, what it kills me... Is honestly, as we look at this, is anything on the McDonald's menu being seven dollars and fifty cents blows my mind. Yeah, mostly because of how I grew up. Thirty nine cent burger, twenty nine cent hamburger. I fucking wish, right? Oh my god, a seven. There is nothing at McDonald's. Like well, I should walk out of there total with my drink for under. Seven dollars and fifty cents. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Look at this shit, dude. No, no, a hundred percent. With and the McChicken, dude, there is a two hundred percent increase dude, since the end of two thousand nineteen. That's bro. That I know. It's fun because it's because but, minimum wages go. It's yeah, inflation. The, they're raising the rate they because the the chains are like. Well, I get it, dude. Yeah, uh, don't get mad at me. I'm just fucking explaining it to you. You ask why. I'm telling you why. But why they gotta be so greedy, man? Like they're making a gazillion dollars and just. Just because you got to pay your employee more so they can fucking live like humans. Yeah. You're asking. And by the way, what you're doing is you're asking the demographic, which is a lower income, income demographic. hundred percent. So you are, you are, you are giving more, but you're taking from the same community. hundred percent. It's and such a dick move. I a I hundred percent agree. A hundred percent. Yeah, I, I think it's. Yo, guys, I think it's bullshit. Small businesses. Yeah, fuck yeah. Small Mom and pop places, baby. Small. Fuck these people. Yeah, a hundred percent. Let me tell you right now. Fuck all of these people. Yeah. Fuck all of these people because they don't give one single shit about you. No. Not only are they feeding you straight poison, and it is straight poison. It is. But they are not passing the savings along to you. No. Yo, they are that McChicken or McPigeon or whatever you want to call it. McDelicious. It is a McDick is what it is. McDelicious. <sighs> I love McChickens. Do you shout really? out shout out my boy Evan Stevens, bro. Every time we went to McDonald's, it was two McChickens, a medium fry and a drink for $7. That was the fucking deal. Well, now that's not happening. No, it's fucking not, which is ridiculous. If I get two McChickens, I'm already at 9 bucks. What's that? It's like what the fuck are we doing? BBL Drizzy. I love that. You're, by the way, the beef's over. What is? The beef. What beef? Between Kendrick and Drake. Oh, it's yeah. Over. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. It's just one day, Top Dog, uh, you know what Top Dog is? No. He's, he runs Kendrick's label. Top Dog, like, anywho. <laughs> I figured. Did you just ask me if I know who a grown man named Top Dog is? I think he's, he's an old school He's an old school rapper. I figured I, he might have be some, some Top educated. Top Dog was like an animated Top Dog. That's underdog. That's also cat dog. Cat dog didn't scream cat dog. No, probably not. Here it come to save the day. Is that underdog? That's underdog. Yeah. Okay. Anywho. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, and then Drake also posted on a story. He was like, well, that was fun. Summer vibes only. And I was like, yeah, dude, that's it? They're was, selling records. No, no, I love it. And also, here's the thing. Here's the thing about me. Baby, here's the thing about me. I, I, I am a music fan and I am a rap fan. And I love hip hop and all this shit. I, if you are siding with one person so heavily that you can't just appreciate, like, here's the thing you can enjoy Kendrick's disses and you can enjoy Drake's disses. Like, you can't, like, it, it's, there's, you can always put them together. Like, I don't know why we're picking sides. I've just enjoyed that the music was put out. It was, I'm not gonna like, and Kendrick, guys, Kendrick fucked him up. There and was, can we just acknowledge there? It sells tickets. It yeah, no, it makes that's they call each other and they're like, "Hey, I'm gonna fuck you up. Cool, I'm gonna fuck you up. Cool, I'm gonna fuck you up." We sold a bunch of tickets. We got a bunch of views later. Yeah, yeah, deuces. By the way, that is the most present Kendrick Lamar's been online or in this music since. I don't even know. I gotta tell you, if you put out a BBL jersey every six months, I'm super psyched. BBL. I'm still listening to it. Why wouldn't you? It's fucking awesome. I saw Andrew Schultz, dude. You right? I remember. Can I tell? That was a show you wanted me to come with you to, and I said, "Take an Uber." Can I tell you guys <laughs> how 
awesome his show was. He's oh, funny, bro. Oh, I, okay. You know I'm a comedy nerd. Mm -hmm. I watch a lot of comedy specials, man. Um, if you're putting a special out and I know you, I'm watching it. Yep. And I'm sending you a message after. That's nice of you. I always do. I, I'm here to support. Yeah, beef, I, beef is stupid. I'm here to support the community. As I, you should. Right. We, that's what you should be doing. Yo, Andrew Schultz, not only did he theme it, it's called Life, Life Tour, and it's about him having a baby. And it's that's it's it's like the fight story. He did that same thing. He he basically themed it, but went in and out of the story. Right, 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 right. right, right. So, but he had a story in there, dude. You remember the story I used to tell on stage about going to the jerk off doctor's office? Oh, 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 yeah. And they, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Could be high. And so, no, no, different one. Oh, this is a story I was telling before we were touring together. By the way, jerk off doctor's office. Just say sp sp sperm. He is jerk off doctor's office. But it makes it sound like the doctor's jerking you off when you say that. Well, he's the jerk off doctor. But also, <laughs> maybe not. Maybe we not. just got to. Can I tell Move you, on. so you know what happened in that? And this, this story's online, everybody. Uh, but same thing happened to Schultz. It's funny. We, the stories are different, but there are similarities. Same, same, but different. It, it, he, so <laughs> some, one of the similarities is that, and he, I said this in my joke too, which is the, the last place you want to be recognized. Yeah. Is the lobby. At the yeah, joke yeah, yeah. So he was, someone was calling him Schultzy. I had a guy staring at me, right? Right. Staring oh, I kind of remember this story. Staring at me, staring at me. And I'm about ready to check out. And he walked up and he goes, hey. And I was like, hey. And he goes, listen, my wife's a big fan. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, you mind if I get a picture and an autograph? I'm like, no, I don't know about the picture, man. I go, maybe an autograph. He goes, listen, when she knows, when she hears that I met Dane Cook, and I was like, yeah, I'll give you an autograph. Yeah, I forgot about that. So exactly. I signed Hilarious. I signed it. I forget what her name was. To Shirley, great meeting your husband at the jerk off doctor's office, Dane Cook. <laughs> Have you told Dane that? Uh, I'm going to tell where I'm going to have him on this podcast. We're going to interview him. Oh, I can't wait to, and I can't I wait for you to tell him. I cannot that. wait that is to tell so him that. funny. Holy shit. One of my favorite men. I, 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 I'm trying to, and I don't look any, Dane and I don't look. Zero. Yeah. Zero. I think, I mean, now I will tell you who I do look like is Matthew McConaughey. Oh, Jesus. It's all Matthew McConaughey. Hey, listen, <laughs> I had somebody else. We were talking about it in the post, and somebody else reached out to me, and they were like, "I've always thought you looked like McConaughey." Pull it up. Pull, pull up. the receipts. You said someone reached out. Pull up the receipts. I will. Right, well, I'll pull it up. Pull it up right now. God damn! I don't know what post it was on. Pull dude. it up right now. I don't know what post it was on. You just said it happened this this past week. Pull no, it up. It. <laughs> Pixar didn't happen. All right, we'll do it after the show. That's what I thought. I, dude, I, I don't, I'm not going to spend our fucking podcast looking through my social media, but I'll post it. Yeah, How yeah, about yeah. that? Yeah, post it. I want to see it. I will. Great. So, but here's the deal, dude. I I think McConaughey and I should have some sort of, like, we should do it like a movie like Schwarzenegger and DeVito, but twins. But like real. Schwarzenegger twins. and DeVito, that's about as exact a look like as you look to Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> So that would be perfect. I'm actually. Schwarzenegger, right? No, you're DeVito. For sure. You're if you, if it's between you and McConaughey, you're for sure Danny DeVito. How, how am I DeVito and he's Schwarzenegger? Do you think he's bigger than me? Or do you think it's just pictures? He's jacked. He's big. He's jacked. No, I, he's short. He's 5'9. No, no, I mean like. I bet you he's 5'9, 160, which is right around my size. Yeah, I don't know if he's bigger than you or not. But you know, movie dudes, they look like they're going to be big. And then you, you know. Yeah. And then like, yeah. Like. <sighs> yeah. I mean, like, not, not. Dave like, Spade doesn't look like he's going to be big. Zero. Not, he, not, honestly, that is, not that it's Kevin Hart. I'm not going to lie. I worked on a set where it was like a commercial for him. Yeah. And he walked by and I was like, God damn, he's small. Can I tell Holy you what? Holy crap. And I hope Spade hears this. He's actually taller than I thought he was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, hey, little fella. Yeah, You're actually bigger than yeah. I thought you were going to be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Little buddy. Yeah. I mean, Kevin Hart looks like I could hold him on my hip. Yeah. My he God, he bro, does look like a he girl is, boy. I, when he walked by me, uh, he was. Uh, he said hey to everybody. By the way, super nice dude. All Not, I've ever heard all, about him. No, dude. On the set that we worked on, 
what am I talking about? I met him. He worked, he hosted Chelsea's show when we were. There you go. Yeah. But well, the set that I worked on, we're filming a commercial for him. Um, I was, the only bad thing I can say about him is that he showed up two and a half hours late, but his shit, his work, his choice, don't care. Yeah. Whatever. Like, and that's just, you know, whatever. At least he showed up and we got paid. Let me just tell you, incredibly generous with his friends. Extremely. Everybody who was there in his yeah. posse, but like they, they roll deep. They're together. It's loyalty. Good dude. Super nice dude. He came up and said, Hey to everybody on the set, no matter you were a PA camera guy, he made sure he may not have remembered your name, but he came and shook your hand. He said, Hey to everybody. Yeah. And made sure lunch was on time for us. Like super, super nice dude. Got nothing bad to say about him. Wicked short. Yeah. Way shorter than I thought he was going to be. Like, like, like a cabbage patch kid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 well, tiny, honestly, I was stunned. I was stunned. Yeah. Like you could put him in a baby Bjorn and just carry just him around. around. <laughs> Yo, why the rock hasn't done that with him yet is I think maybe he has. I think maybe Kevin probably draws a line with the baby Bjorn. Like he's a grown man. He probably doesn't want to yeah, be yeah. baby Bjorn by the rock. Yeah. But at the same time, it's not like really he can stop the rock. If the rock runs for president, you vote for him. 100%. Really? Well, no, because here's the thing. We're not going to get into politics right now, but like not enough people would vote for the rock for it to actually work. I and disagree. Those, I don't. And those votes would then be wasted and then they wouldn't go to, you know, I, I, one or the other. I disagree. I think, honestly, people are so fucking sick of these two old motherfuckers that we just need somebody out there drinking tequila, lifting weights at three in the morning. No, I'll take Oprah for the love of God. Like somebody. I would just, just not these take two somebody old who fucks. isn't an old fuck. Yeah. I don't care if you're white or black or gray or Asian or Mexican. I don't give a fuck. But you, uh, li listen, I... I, we took my grandfather's keys. Yeah. 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 So you shouldn't be driving the country. hundred percent. Um, well, can we go back to this fast food thing real quick? So we're yes, talking about in and out. Yes, yeah. Yo, so I'm not going to go back to this graph. I just want to, so I had an in and out burger today and I was just craving a burger and, uh, and here in Vegas, like we do have in and outs. We have a uh, Freddy's, which is like a smash burger, which is overly expensive. Holy shit. The one thing, like I grew up in LA in and out is, was a steeple. That's, that's like, if I wanted a burger going in and out, best thing about it in and out, Always. They've always paid their workers great wages. Yeah. You, your managers can make six figures a year. Don't they have insurance too? Dude, benefits, yeah. all this shit. How in and out is run, great. Their prices have never changed. I went in and got a double cheeseburger. I just wanted I just wanted the cheese and the meat. I didn't want the lettuce and the onion and tomato. I just wanted the the, the bun, the meat, the cheese, and the spread. I got a fucking sounds so dirty. Bun, meat, cheese, and spread. Spread between the buns. With the meat? Oh, yeah. Leaving the cheese? All over. <laughs> <laughs> Why hey, did you eye contact me when you said all over? Hey, man, you made it weird in the first uh, place, so... That was as creepy as we've gotten here on this podcast. To make it weirder. Uh, uh, here's the thing. I walked out of there, spent $7.40 for a burger and fries. And drink? No, I didn't get a drink. Didn't want a drink. Because I had a drink in the car. Okay. But so, look. Here's the thing, though. If we went to in and out and we got double-double meals with yeah. a drink, fries, all that, I'm spending less than... Because I think she didn't count it as a meal. I think right. she charged them separately, mm -hmm. which is why it was $7.40 or $8.40 or whatever it was. But if you and I wanted to go get in and out right now, and we both got a double-double or a meal or whatever it is, we're spending under $17 for food that is good. Like yeah. that, yeah. it's not shitty. But I'm going to say this. 10 out of 10 times, any day of the week... I'm taking Whataburger over in and out And I'm going to say that dead ass into the camera. Hold on one second. Uh, uh. Yeah, for sure. Whatever. Whataburger, Whataburger, over in and out 100%. I'm, I'm, Do I think in and out is overhyped? No, it's still delicious. It's greatly, it's, Whataburger is expensive as shit. So I, that's the only thing that I'll say. I honestly, Whataburger, double patty melt. Those, what that motherfucker is better then I will take that over an in and out burger. I can't remember. Any day. I can't remember Whataburger. The last time I had Whataburger, Whataburger. The last time I had it, I was driving back from spring break in Texas mm. and I pulled into the, and I had taken ecstasy five nights in a row and my brain wasn't working and I shit orange and I wiped my butt with my socks and I walked out of the bathroom. That yeah. was the last time I've ever been in a Whataburger. Hilarious. Now, <laughs> well, there's, a, there's a 24 For some reason, I flushed my underwear down the toilet. Interesting. There's a 24-hour Whataburger on the strip now. Yeah, that's 24 hours. I'm not going to be there. Uh, if, I, honestly, if, I think I'm going to go there next week. Yo, I'm telling like 100%, 100%, 100%. in and out well, is the only... I'll do that... Uh, what do you call it? Protein style. Yeah, yeah. And no fries, which is a bummer. 
But I'm not going to lie. Their fries have been lacking recently. Lacking, lacking, lacking. I don't know why, but they've Let me ask you something, dude. Let me ask you something, dude. When you get water burger we're running out. Yeah. When are you getting back in the gym? What are we doing? Whoa, it feels like an attack. Over here. When are we getting back in the gym? It feels like an attack. Why? I just want you to be healthy. I know. I'm healthy. I move around in the day. We go out. I get I get sunlight. We go out. We we're we're I get at, sunlight? What are you a plant? What do you mean I get sunlight? Hey man, you were the one who told me that, oh, I should get up at 7 a.m. and get sun in my You eyes. should. What are you, a plant? No, but uh, I'm, uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Dickhead. <laughs> Fuck out of here with that shit. I'm out on that. So you know what I love? You know what I love? When you're tired of me talking, you go, oh. Because <laughs> I know you'll just laugh and I know I can fuck off to the next topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. Dude, I did. Did I tell you this? I did a Murph. Yeah, a Murphy run. Not a run, but like a. I mean, you. by the way, that's the first time I've ever seen you on a treadmill. I hate the treadmill. It's not good, not good for your knees. Terrible. I told Delphine, I'm like, hey, we only did half of it on the treadmill. I did the rest on the rower. Because rowers, it, I, for me, like if I was gonna, I I would choose it's running. It's the compression of the running. 100 percent for your knees yeah, because yeah. you're old as fuck. So like for me, like I, <laughs> I would choose the run because I, I like I don't like to run, but I can run. Yeah. Like I I like if I really am pushing myself for it, like. I can run. I ran a I ran a five forty five mile in high school. So like, I dude, can, I can run if I want not to. Me. Well, I also like also for me though. When I get tired, I just gotta elongate my strides, and I'm catching everybody. Like that's the benefit I have. But also, I just hate running. It's hot. I it's the pull ups for me. I could have done a gazillion push ups and air squats. And I and, and to be fair, everybody, I only I had a half an hour, so I only did half a Murph. So I did You're still pretty good. 50 pull-ups, 100 push-ups, 150 air squats, and basically a mile run. You say do you sit-ups in that? No sit-ups. Huh. I'm gonna tell you something, dude. Those 50 pull-ups hard. That is where it fucks up your whole body. It's 50 and then you move on to the next one, right? No, no, or, no. Or, you do them in rounds. Oh, so it's like it's like uh it's like five rounds, essentially. You can do them in five or however you want to do it. I did 10 rounds. Yeah, because I couldn't do it's 10 pull-ups around. It's the pull. I could have done the first probably two rounds of pull-ups, but it would have really burnt me out. No, nah, five, five, you're right. So five, five, five I, I, I did five, I would do five, 10, 15, five, 10, 15. So 10 rounds of five, 10, 15. Nonstop. 10, 15. You had to finish in 30 minutes. Uh, and that's what I had 30 minutes. And I think I could probably get it down to 25, but I'm going to tell you something, dude, those pull-ups. Hard. It, it, it was making we, you know, those noises you make. <laughs> That's just a you thing. Yeah, I, I was because That's I was definitely like, just. And yeah, and I Delphine sound, was like, "Why? <laughs> yeah, I don't sound like I'm crying when I'm trying. <laughs> the fuck is going on here? I feel like I'm crying. It sounded like you were crying. The sky is crying. Uh, also, um, we're gonna talk about the Celtics real quick before we get out of here. Uh, you hate this team. No, I don't hate the team. Well, not what you hate the coach. I don't hate the coach. This is your putting words into my mouth. You said you hope they lose. I neither hate nor I neither hate the coach. I was just mad. I, <laughs> I neither I neither hate the coach nor the team. I think the team is one of the most talented teams that's been around in the NBA for a while. Yeah. They have a great defense. They can switch. Everybody can switch. Derek Wright might be the most underrated. Dude, yo, bald, in the league. bald Derek White is another level of a Dude, I'm, I'm gonna tell you player. something right now. Derek White in the last six minutes, seven minutes of the game, that's the dude. dude. And, and this is no knock on Tatum or Brown, but those dudes are gonna control the game in the first 42 minutes. But I'm gonna tell you something. You know who, who show and Jalen Brown made huge shots. Jason Tatum has made huge shots. Tatum hasn't made any huge. He shots. made some big shots against in the, but it was but. Derek White, dude, that dude makes all the plays. And so yeah. defensive, offensive, like yeah. I, I I love him. I'm going to go back for a game. I'm coming. You're not going back without me. I think I am. Without me? Yeah. You're not taking a brother. Fuck all that shit. I think I am. Are you for real? You asked me the other night. And yeah, you're but gonna... it's going to cost no, 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 me no. money you're... because plans have changed. And the night that I would go has changed. And so it's going to cost me probably an extra, whatever that last minute plane ticket is for you. 
Well, on that note, I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty hot about that. I might walk out of this podcast studio. Okay, I'll take you. Dude, I, legit, I might walk out of here if I'll you're dead-ass. I, I, I would be pissed. <laughs> pissed. Pissed, pissed. I've never been to a fucking playoff game in any sport. Yeah. You're giving, you were just like, oh, I'll give you a chance to go to the finals. You're just going to rip my heart out like that? I thought it'd be a fun joke nah, to play on here. Nah, you and your, one of your brothers already saw the Pats win a Super Bowl. Fuck all that shit. What? We did. We were at that Seattle game. That's what I'm saying. I'm and I know, playing, and I know he would be the one to go. I'm, so I'm, I'm just on. playing with you. Hey, you better be playing. relax a little bit. Hey man, I'm, were you almost about to walk out of here? Legit, I almost didn't say it. I almost took my headphones off and walked out. <laughs> I would have been so uh, I wish fucking I had, upset. I wish I had kept that joke going. I might not have talked to you on the road this weekend. Yeah, you would have. I don't think so. You would have. Because I would have told you I was kidding. Oh, okay. Well, then you would have. But yeah. like, had that, had you tried to keep that joke going, I I would, silence. Silence. Legit. What's the maddest you've ever been to me? Mm. I don't know. I've been pretty mad at you. Oh, I'll probably when you made me transfer schools. Yeah. I didn't talk to you for two weeks. That ended up being the best move. What was the best thing that happened to me in my, my childhood? Childhood. 100%. Okay. I think I knew that one. What do you think second is? I don't know. I uh, I don't know. I, I, there's not a lot of times I've really been mad at you for something that's been... I mean, granted, me transferring schools was my fault. Yeah. but you, There's no fault. Well, no fault. Not fault. But you know what I mean. Like, like, But like the other times I was mad Did at you... you were getting bullied mercilessly. Yeah, whatever. But like... Not whatever. And that's what was affecting your school. 100%. 100%. And so it, it, your mom and I were like, it can't... If we move them... And he gets bullied. It can't be worse than what's happening right now. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. we got to give him a chance to come back to yeah. who we know he is. The other times that I was mad at you when I was grounded was because I was grounded, but that's my fault. Yeah. So those ones I I eh, can't really be mad at. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like so, but there's not a lot of times I've really been like, I mean, that joke you just played on me might be number two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I need to get us a rental car. Yeah. Oh, also. Uh, big step in my adult life before we get out of here. My girlfriend and I are now Costco members. Huge. What was your first purchase from Costco? Fucking. Can you see uh, me bouncing my An packs? eight pack of ribeyes. <laughs> are you still eating steaks? Oh yeah. Absolutely. But they're the big ribeyes that are cut in half. So they're super thin. Yeah. So they cook really fast. So it's like, it's hard to. Do they still have extra large shopping carts at Costco? They're, dude, not only do they have shopping carts, they have fucking carts like the flatbed that's carts. what i'm saying yeah. oh yeah, yeah yeah they still have flatbed carts 100 percent. i don't blame them you can go buy a pack of 75 pack of toilet paper how the fuck do you carry that it's crazy i know i love that place though it's the best but but i called my buddy evan because the first time i'd ever stepped foot in a costco was with evan ever in my entire life because we never shopped at costco nah. but so the first time i ever stepped in the foot in a costco was with evan and his mom and his sister so i called him the other night i go and i kind of played a little trick on him i was like hey man uh Iman and I have some good news, and uh, I thought you'd be the first to know that Iman and I are now Costco members. And I tried to set it up like her and I were expecting. Yeah. And he was like, oh, fuck yeah. And I was like, nothing on the setup? He was like, what setup? And I was like, fucking, <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> right over his fucking head. Hilarious. But yeah. Uh, but I think my favorite thing at Costco for sure is uh, they sell it in their food court. It's called a chicken bake. It is just like, I don't even know how to explain it. It is just a giant piece of bread. It's probably about like, 10 inches long mm -hmm. and it's got cheese on the cheese uh, on the top of it and it's filled with like chicken and bacon and like a creamy white sauce and you used to only be able to get it at the food court and now they sell them frozen and you psyched I'm going right after this podcast to Costco actually I'm gonna I need to go back to the house and say hi to my little buddy before I take off man can what I have the flight tomorrow seven I'm sorry, it's tonight at 12.15 a.m. okay you told me it was Thursday morning My that is Thursday morning yeah but when you say we usually say Wednesday night or Thursday it's morning. Wednesday night. Oh shit, that changes up my whole fucking day. Didn't I send you? Didn't you? Don't you have it on your app? No, because you didn't book it on American. It's on Alaska. No, dude, I did book it on American. I literally am looking at my. I looked at my American flight before, or my American app before this. Anywho, it's let's, on American. I can send you the. It's not for me. Okay. Which it usually is, which now scares me because the last time that happened, I didn't have a plane ticket. Well, you do. I'm looking at your boarding pass right now. Oh, here it is. It just loaded. Thank you. Ridiculous. Okay. Well, okay. That changes everything. Oh, 12, 12, 15. Oh, sh okay. Great. I got to pack tonight then. All right. Um, you want to say anything before I close this out? All and hopefully you don't interrupt me like you always do when I try to just get us to cut it off. I want to say this. Guys, 
thank you. Super grateful for all of you. Let's go with this podcast. I, 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 I hear your messages and read your messages and they're amazing. And so keep leaving them. Keep telling some friends about this show. I had somebody say to me, a, it's too bad that you and your son started this podcast so late. There's nobody else looking for new podcasts. Let's prove those motherfuckers wrong. Yeah. Let's show you everybody how amazing this Yeah, hundred percent. About- there's nothing like what we're doing, dude. There's, Nobody's there's doing nobody like doing. you and I together. Mm-hmm. And so I'm so happy to be here. And I'm so happy to all all you are listening. And yo, know, I have some amazing comedy coming up, dude. I Great. I've my brain is turned back on. Good. I'm glad you're I'm glad you're back out of your space. Me, yeah, me too. Um, and the last thing I will say is this. I came home from this weekend. I walked. I I was tired, man. I know. Do you know what I did? I went in my backyard. I grabbed legit a best day beer. And I sat back there. Nailed the sound effect. No, you didn't. I had, guys, I forgot how almost cathartic it is for me to crack a beer and drink it. And so Best Day is non-alcoholic, but it tastes exactly like beer. Yes, it does. It is such a cool thing for me to be able to get back and do. I love the sound it makes when you pop it open. I love the taste of a nice cold beer on a hot day. Best Day Brewing, dude, has been like a real lifesaver for me. Um, And I enjoy drinking it with you. It feels like a nice bonding experience. Um, but yet yeah, everybody j- just a heads up. If you're drinking beer, but you don't want to drink beer, best day, bro. It is legit a great tasting beer. And the dude who runs it, Jim, great dude. Um, you know, he's a, a small business owner and he's doing this the right way. So everybody go out and get yourself. If you're not a drinker, but you want to drink a beer, best day brewing, best beer out there right now. Thank you all so much. Jacob Wolf, take it away. Uh, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates and tickets. Uh, We got a really fun June coming up. I'm not going to lie. I'm pretty excited. Uh, First time in Hawaii. I love going to Portland and uh, San Diego. San Diego. Oh, yeah. La La Jolla? La Jolla Comedy Comedy Store. Father's Day weekend. Hey. Bring your dads out, man. Yeah, absolutely. Because you know who else comes to my show? 40-year-old white women. So your dad might get a little ooh-ee-ee-ee. Anywho. Um, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates and tickets Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms uh, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram it's Jake Wolf on TikTok um, and thank you guys again again none of this is possible without you they can't see you the camera's on me um, damn it yeah, Matt you weren't yeah. supposed to change it to <laughs> um, again thank you guys so much um, uh, I can't wait to start writing a little more and get some shit out there that's not about the old dude across from me um, I so, think more things about me is better Cap um, but so thank you guys again and without further ado like always tell somebody you love them today do something nice for someone we love you we'll see you next week later hey if you like this podcast you just watched you're gonna love the one I'm popping up in your face right now check it out